Hello, everybody. Hi, I'm Namrita Ravinder from Synthetic Biology Research and Development Team within Thermo Fisher Scientific. I'm here to introduce a very interesting topic on a transformative technology called CRISPR-Cas9 system that has um, made genome editing research uh, very easy and simple. And you'll learn why. And before that, I would like to take you a little bit and ask you to concentrate on what are the different kinds of uh, creatures and organisms that are present within nature's database. And if you look at each of those species and each of those organisms, they are unique in their features, in their structure, and the functionality that each of these um, uh, creatures bring in. And all this is made possible because of the perfect balance in gene modulation within the, each of these systems. And if any change occurs within G these genes, it changes its respective functionality, and um, which might even bring um, a diseased phenotype. That's where I would like to introduce this topic, genome editing, and what the downstream applications are. To put in simple terms, genome editing is cleaving a DNA, or rewriting a DNA, or introducing a new piece at a particular location within the um, genome of interest. And why would one want to do this? One can actually make simple changes, like point mutations within, within a gene to knock down its function, and so that they can study the uh, phenotypic effects of these knockdown, or make more sophisticated um, applications, like disease-resistant plants, or mutate a gene within a host to change a diseased phenotype into a normal phenotype, or even create um, tissue and um, animal models to study a particular disease phenotype or screen for drugs. And uh, one of the other things that uh, people are venturing into is uh, stem cell engineering for gene therapy. So how can one reach to these applications? What are the first steps? First thing is one needs to precisely uh, design an engineered nucleus that can go at a user-defined locus and make a targeted cleavage, following which one can leverage the cell's repair mechanism to make small changes like silent mutations or point mutations to knock down a gene or bring in an exogenous piece of DNA with different functionalities of interest. And to do these things, if you see in the next slides, traditionally, how these were done and how we went from no control and no precision to where we are now, where we have gained uh, with different technologies that we have in hand, precision and control for genome editing. So if you go back in history, genome editing was uh, typically done by random integration by treating a cell with chemicals or radiations and look for different mutations and screen the uh, clones to, uh, to achieve a clone that has a desired function. Now there, it can be a labor-intensive process because you don't know where these edits are happening. You don't know how many clones you need to screen for. Then came um, RNAi technology. Very interesting, you can do gene expression modulations and look at the phenotypes of those um, um, expression of the genes, what happens when you activate a gene or repress a gene. Very interesting, but if you look at that technology, um, it's almost like you're attacking a horse after it's released from the barn, right? So, but if you want to actually make a change, a permanent change within the genome, you want to be able to change the genomic sequence uh, within the chromosome. So um, then came in um, uh, homology-driven uh, recombination events where you can integrate an exogenous piece of DNA, but you will have to bring that piece with flanking regions that have um, similarity or which is exactly the same as a flanking region for the locus of interest within the genome and then swap it. So while this is a targeted approach, the efficiency is really very low and that again results into more screening to get a clone that is um, having a desired function. Then um, a decade ago uh, came in technology like zinc finger, very elegant. One can precisely design a zinc finger to bind a particular targeted locus. But here, the designing of zinc finger itself is labor intensive. That's because you need three repeat domains within a zinc finger to be able to target for one base. So you have to mix and match these different repeats to get um, sequences or protein domains that are specific for a sequence of interest, making the design process labor intensive. Then here the next generation of technologies where we are right now currently with TALS and CRISPR technology. TAL technology, uh, I would not uh, go very detailed into that, but I just want to summarize that. Uh, it's very easy to design because you have one repeat domain per base pair, therefore 
very intuitive to design this whole system. And the synthesis itself is very easy. Uh, but what happens is since this is a protein system and each time you want to target a gene, you have to make a new protein and the payload is higher. While it's precise and specific, it's not very amenable to multiplexing. That's where I would like to introduce the CRISPR-Cas9 technology. It's very elegant because it's simple to design and you will see that in the next slide and um, why it is simple and why, why uh, most of the researchers are now shifting towards this technology. And shown here uh, is the CRISPR-Cas9 system. This originally is a bacterial acquired immune system that um, bacteria leverages to fight against the invading viral nucleic acid. So what happens is upon infection or uh, attack by a virus, the nucleic acid within the virus is copied by the bacteria and integrated into its genome and it keeps a record of that information. And then during future, um, attack by the same uh, virus or nucleic acid, what happens is it recognizes, hey, I've seen this virus before. It makes a copy of the integrated piece of information in its chromosome and uh, makes CRISPR RNA transcripts that are processed and then uh, uh, binds with the Cas proteins uh, within this CRISPR system and forms a complex that later on attacks the invading virus nucleic acid. So recently, uh, this, um, this gained a lot of traction in the genome editing uh, field, and scientists have applied this technology for editing genomes from within a wide variety of host systems, from single cellular organisms to multicellular mammalian systems. And with that, I would like to get a little bit into the detail of how the system works. So there are two main components in the system, the Cas9 nucleus, which acts as a DNA cleavage enzyme just by itself, it doesn't, it doesn't know where to go within the genome. The second con uh, component is the guide RNA, which has two pieces in it. The CRISPR RNA, that's shown right here, um, which uh, defines target specificity, and uh, it can be anywhere from 17 base pairs to 20 base pairs, and the tracer RNA component, that stays constant. One doesn't have to touch that piece. So within the um, host, the guide RNA forms a complex with the Cas9 protein, and this whole unit is uh, recruited towards the genomic locus of interest within the DNA, uh, just by base pairing between the CRISPR RNA sequence and the target sequence within the genome. So this base pairing tells the system, this is where I need to bind and this is where I need to cleave. And the uh, two cleavage uh, sites within the Cas9 is specific for one strand. So that's the reason why it makes a double-stranded cleavage within the genome. Another beauty of the system is the Cas9 protein itself can be tethered to uh, different functional domains of choice. For example, a uh, gene activation domain or a gene repressor domain so that you can recruit this whole system by designing this uh, small region and bring this new functionality to the genome of interest and activate, turn on the gene or uh, turn down the level of expression. Again, I would like to point out, since it's just a 17 to 20 base pair region that defines, defines the specificity, it's as simple as designing a PCR primer. So that's the beauty of the system. And also, another key feature is um, the payload. So each time you have, say if you want to target five genes within a pathway, you don't have to bring five big protein molecules, right? You have a constant protein that stays there, and you, all you bring in is these small payloads of 100 base pair each time with its respective promoter. So th that's the beauty of the system. You can multiplex genome editing. So with that, if you look at the next slide, I have a simple ex uh, example here, a little busy, but what I want you to focus on on the left panel here is this gel. Um, you, you take a sample and you target this sample at a single one-shot step with four different guide RNAs, each for a specific gene within the genome. And what I show here is an experiment where uh, 293 cells were taken and um, have transfected this for, with four different guide RNAs at the same time. And following harvesting of the samples, and you test for the cleavage at each of these gene locuses within the genome, shown as a cleavage band here, is how efficiently this particular gene can simultaneously target and cleave your four genes at the same time. So this is an example of multiplexing. On the left side here, what I have is an, a nice feature of Cas9 that makes it specific. 
And before I get into that result, I would like to point out that one would wonder if it's so simple with just a 17 base pair, how specific is the system? Is there off-target effects? Can you find similar sequences elsewhere? So how would you mitigate this off-target effect? So the way one can do this is Cas9 protein itself, as I mentioned earlier, there are two catalytic active sites, one for each strand of the DNA. If you knock down one of these catalytically active sites, Cas9 enzyme acts as a nickase, cleaving only one strand of the DNA, which would not harm the cell much. It would not make a targeted cleavage. Therefore, uh, one cannot integrate a piece of DNA by leveraging the double-stranded cleavage. So, but if you take this nickase with two guide RNAs, position on opposite strand, juxtaposed by a specific spacer region, what we are doing is we are increasing the binding sequence, thereby increasing the specificity at the on-target site and reducing off-target elsewhere in the genome. So that's how you can uh, increase the specificity of the system. And shown here is an example where two different guide RNAs were used. In a single experiment with Nikkei's, you get a double-stranded cleavage shown as cleavage efficiency here. Um, uh, as opposed to... Uh, Taking, doing a co-transfection with two guide RNAs, if you take single guide RNAs and then transfect it the Cas9 nickase, you would not get a cleavage. So you can multiplex with the system. You can increase the specificity by using Cas9 as a nickase. And all this can be done by a simple designing concept where you change at 17 to 20 base pair region within the system. With that, I would like to show you here on this slide a recent... Um, research um, paper that was published last year showing the beauty of uh, uh, the system and why this is transformative. If you look at the top panel here, what this group has done is they simultaneously targeted five different genes within stem cells using five different guide RNAs, one for each gene within the genome. And what they could do is they targeted all of these at the same time in a plate and they were able to pick clones downstream and were successfully able to get clones that had all the five genes knocked down within the system. So this, this is where the beauty of the system comes in. And to emphasize a little more, as in a, another example from the same paper where they took a zygote from a mouse, injected with two CRISPRs, one for each gene, and they uh, following transplantation of this zygote into the mouse recipient mouse model, they were able to generate progenies in one shot, having double gene knockouts in both copies of the chromosome. This is what is the simplicity of the system, fast design to implementation. And uh, with that, I would like to conclude uh, by taking you to the next slide. Um, again, I would like to summarize this whole system. It's very simple because it's easy to design. It's just a 17 base pair region that leverages the whole CRISPR-Cas9 system and brings it to a user-defined location to make genome editing easier. These kind of applications, targeted genome editing, has wide range of application. One can um, generate disease models by precisely editing a genome locus within a mouse model, for example, edit a stem cell for gene therapy, or create disease-resistant plants. With that, I would like to thank you all. And if you would like to learn more on CRISPR-Cas9, I would encourage you to go to this link. Thank you.